Hi, this is Shad with LoveToCode.com. Welcome back to another tutorial on Java JDBC. In this video, we will learn how to read and write clubs. For this tutorial, we will make use of the employees table. I have a SQL script that creates the table and adds sample data for you. You can download it from the link below. The file is called tablesetup.sql. So what exactly is a clob? A clob is a collection of character data stored as a single entry in the database. Clobs are typically used to store large text documents, either plain text or XML data. It's important to note that not all databases support clobs. So when you're using MySQL, you can add a column with a long text data type. This data type has support for four gigabytes of characters. So you can see in this example, I have my create table statement and I have an entry here for resume and I give the data type of long text. That's our clob data type. All right, so let's see how we can actually write a clob to a database. So in this example, I'm gonna add a resume for an employee. So I have a local text file here called sampleResume.txt. I wanna read this file from my local file system and update it in the database. So in this little code snippet here, I have a SQL statement for update employees. I'll set resume equals the question mark where email equals John Doe at foo.com. The question mark is our placeholder for our prepared statement. We can move down on the next line, we can prepare the statement, and then move down a couple of more lines, we can set up the file handle, and this will allow me to read the input file, sampleResume.txt. Then using that prepared statement, I'll say set character stream one comma the input. So effectively here, I'm gonna load this information from the file into that entry there. And then I actually execute this statement by saying my statement.execute update, and this will actually update the database with the clob data. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to Eclipse and see this in action. I have a simple Java program called Write Clob Demo. This example will store the resume for a given employee. The resume is a text file. The app's going to read that local text file and store it in the, in the uh, database. So this is basically the same code we saw in the previous slides. I won't go through all the gory details, but here's the SQL statement that we had before. Update resume for John Doe at foo.com. We read the information. And so then here we say my statement I set character stream, we give one comma the input, and then finally we perform the execute update. Okay, so I just ran the program. It first starts off by just giving us the name of the input file, just so we know which file it's actually reading. So it's reading sample resume.txt, says it's storing it in the database, and then shows the SQL that it uses for storing it. So we're updating the resume for John Doe at foo.com and says that it completed successfully. All right, so what I'd like to do now is switch over to the MySQL tool and verify this. I have a query here, select star from employees. I'll run this query and I'll see the output. And we'll note here that for this person, John Doe, there's an entry for resume. I'll open this up in the editor. And I can see in this case, um, the actual text for it. And this is all of the data. So this is our character large object and it's successfully stored in the uh, database for the user. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna read a clob from a database column and write it to a local file. So in the code snippet, we have the SQL select resume from employees where email equals John Doe at foo.com. Then on the next line, we'll actually execute that query. It'll give us back a result set. Then I'll set up a file handle for the output file. So I'll just give it a unique name like resume from db.txt just so I know it's a different file set up the output stream on that one. Then I move down to the section of using a result set. I say result set dot next. And then using that result set, I'll say get character stream. This will actually give me the character stream on that resume column for this result set entry. And that comes back as input. And then I'll actually just do a while loop and I just walk through that input stream, read each character, and I write it to the actual output file. Let's switch over to Eclipse and see this in action. I have a simple Java program called read clob demo. This is based on the code from the previous slide where we basically read the resume for a given employee and then we save it as a local text file. All right, so let's walk through the code. Um, the piece here is I have the actual SQL uh, for reading uh, from employees where email equals John Doe at foo.com. We execute that query. Then we set up the uh, file handle for the file resume db.txt. And then we just go through and we grab that character stream. And then using that, we actually store the information um, in the local file system. All right, so I just ran the application and I'll just check the output. The program says that it's reading the resume from the database. It tells you the actual query that it's using, John Doe at foo.com. 
It also tells you where it's actually saving the file, it gives you the full path so you can easily find it on your file system, resume from db.txt, and then it completed successfully. All right, so let me verify this. Let me move over to my file system, and here's my uh, directory, JDBC Clob, and I have a new file that was just entered here, resume from db.txt. I'll open this up, and I can see that this is the actual resume information that was from the actual database column. So we were successful in reading that data from the database and storing it locally on the file system. Okay, so that wraps up our discussion on reading and writing clobs. Please subscribe to our channel to view more videos on Java. Click the thumbs up to like our video. Also, visit our website, lovetocode.com, to download the Java source code used in this video.